Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday live stream. Let me make sure that you guys can hear us before I start rambling. There. Okay, we're good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hi. So, hi, everyone. I'm Timothy Von Regan, better known as Von Art Online, and I'm joined by my boyfriend, Josh. He will be our wonderful moderator for today. And welcome to our Wednesday live stream. So we do these every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Time. And I've been kind of treating this new year as a year of like every Wednesday will be an education stream. And I'm going to continue doing that for a while because I really enjoy doing these. And today is a little different. So it's not so much a follow along. Rather, we're going to be flexing our creative muscles. And more or less, we're going to talk about how to work them out just because... I, I see a lot of people, including myself from time to time, that will just rely on the first idea that comes to mind. And we're going to talk about how to be a little more creative when it comes to any subject matter. And today's focus is on crystals. Uh, the last two weeks, we've been incorporating crystals into, or we've been learning how to draw them with a pencil. And then last week was coloring them. And I actually have a little, I'll post it probably later tonight uh, on my Instagram, but a little step-by-step -step on the color coloring crystals that we did last week. And this week is more or less, we're gonna be looking at how to take all that knowledge that we learned on the technical side and then push it into our creative side. Because I feel like as awesome as it is to learn how to draw realism and uh, have that technique and that ability, I think applying it into a creative mindset in a creative way is really the, the end goal. I think having a strong technical skill is definitely valuable but I think being able to creatively uh, implement that into your work is almost even more important. So as much as I like learning realism and doing these crystal realism studies, and I'll keep doing some realism stuff as these weeks go on, I think next week we'll do hands and we'll kind of go into that for February. Uh, we're gonna talk today about how to turn a crystal into something much more. And a lot of this can apply to uh, not just crystals, but any subject matter. Uh, but specifically today, we're going to do crystals. So the way that this is going to work, uh, and I forgot to mention, if you want to say uh, any comment or question, be sure to put at Von Art, and Josh will be able to see it and moderate it for us today. So hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm just going about <laughs> here. I'm a little nervous because there's there's a lot that I want to explain, and I, I want it to be done in a well-organized fashion. But last night, I was like trying to figure out how to do this or if I was going to render something from start to finish. But I think I settled on something that is uh, the most cohesive. So hopefully it works today. So everyone is here though. Yeah. Hello, hello everyone. Alice Anthony. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you want to put where you're watching from still, uh, we won't do shout outs like we normally do because I learned that for YouTube, uh, if you don't edit the video after, like don't trim it on the beginning or end, you can still see the comments then on the stream. So I'm trying to start them right away and go from there, but you can still say hi and all that good stuff. So what are you guys going to be doing then today if you want to join me? So uh, if you're doing your work or if this is your lunch break, I totally get it. But if you have time to work with me today, basically I want you, the challenge is, I want you to incorporate crystals into some form of concept art, whether it's a character, a creature, an environment, a weapon, and those are the four that I'm going to cover today. But whatever you want to do, I want to see it because at the end of this stream, which I'll probably go for like an hour and a half, and then I'll show all of your guys' work. So if you've been kind of thinking of ideas since last week's stream, uh, hopefully you have something in mind that you want to work on for today. And these do not have to be polished. They don't have to be finished. If anything, I'm looking more for conceptual pieces. So if it's more sketchy, that's totally okay. And I am very excited to see what people come up with because crystals are kind of a staple in the fantasy realm of art. So I'm excited to see how you guys, you know, incorporate that and try to do it in a new way or something that's more fresh or hasn't really been done before, that's which is I'm difficult. Really, I'm really excited for this one though. I am excited. Yeah. I'm, I was super nervous last night because I was wrapping my brain. I, I thought I was going to do a creature and I would I was going to render it from start to finish the entire stream. But I was like, ah, but I want to talk about how to incorporate crystals on more than just that. So I think I'm, I'm feeling much better this morning. But yeah, last night was I was not feeling it. <laughs> so 
These are the five categories we'll talk about on the stream. And if you have any comments or questions, they don't have to be directly related to what we're working on. Just please feel free to put at Von Art before your comment or question. And yeah, we'll kind of go from there because I'll be talking a lot. So I'll try to periodically have Josh be like, Tim, we have a question here that we need asking. There's no questions yet. But okay, that's what thank I'll you. <laughs> yeah, just tap me because then I'll know, okay, Tim, stop talking. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put on my glasses here. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about before we even dive into the different types of way we can incorporate crystals into concept art is our creative muscle. So what is that? What is a creative muscle? So when I think of the best artists, I, I know I say this before, but or I've said this before, I think the best artists take a really good technical skill and come from a really original creative side and it like builds up to the center. And then the center point is like adding your personal touch or something that makes it unique to that individual. So the best type of art I think are where those three meet. And uh, as much as I think it's good for especially younger artists to work on their technical ability, I still think you need to work on your creative ability just as much because you might be able to render something photorealistic. And some people like that. But I think to really stand out in today's market, especially with social media, uh, you really got to have something that is uniquely your own that stands out. And your creative side is usually uh, the way to do that. Now, your creative muscle is going to be something that you're going to be working out your entire life. And a lot of it's going to be absorbed through other medium, whether it is playing video games when you're a kid, watching movies, uh, life experiences, going to, uh, if you travel a lot. So a lot of these images, whether it's foliage or fauna, flora, whatever, is are going to get locked into your brain if you if you more actively look at what you are uh, observing. And I think it does take more than just like traveling to, like when we went to the Bahamas, it's more than just like looking around and being like, wow, this is really pretty. I think you have to really look at, oh, why does the shape look like that? Or why does the palm tree have that angle and look at all the leaves and how sharp of a leaf end they have compared to um, the bark, which is really rough. I think you need to start really analyzing what you're seeing and uh, you'll start to recognize that there's certain shapes or there's certain textures or certain executions that you tend to favor over others. And even with myself, with my own art, I see that a lot in the way I draw characters. It has obviously a lot of Final Fantasy um, inspiration. And I think the same way that I draw eyes is the same way that I saw Kingdom Hearts and how they did the double iris ring. And even now that I'm older, I can see a lot more influences in the way that I shade and sketch from like artists I enjoy, like Alan Williams or Annie Stig or Justin Gerard. But uh, more than that, I look at how um, I'm positioning or I'm angling things more like Mooka. So you're Frankensteining all of these influences that you kind of garnered and gathered over your life and you're filtering out what you don't like, and then you're letting in what you do. And over time, this becomes your style. But your creative muscle is something that you can actually work out. And today, we're gonna to be talking about that um, before I dive into the other ones. So the, the, <coughs> my favorite quote about uh, creativity that I've, I, gained, I gained last year from an interview with Corey Godby was looking at your idea like a prism. You want to look at it from every angle and it's actually perfect for a crystal stream to have that be the analogy because for the metaphor no analogy 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 right or yeah i always get those mixed up <laughs> yeah kind but of basically things. when you have an idea so let's say if uh i guess for the context of the stream if we're doing a crystal character so like a physical manifestation of a crystal so like a rock golem Okay, that might be your first idea. So in your prism, okay, that's what you have. But what Corey is saying with this quote is now look at it from underneath, from the side, from on top, put a different light on it. And that means that, okay, if you have this rock golem, okay, well, what is their backstory? What environment do they live in? Uh, can they talk? Are they made of magic? And you got to start asking yourself all these questions. And the more questions, the better, because then you're refining that story that is behind the character or whatever it is you're creating and the more elements that you have of that the better and the more original and honestly the more you'll be attached to whatever you're creating 
So that is what it means when you look at your idea like a prism. And I hope that one sticks with you guys because that really, that really stuck with me. And every time I think of a cool idea, I'm like, okay, well, I think this is really cool, but let me look around it for a little bit first before I dive further. Because who knows, maybe I have a really cool character in my head and I, I do like a thumbnail. But yeah, maybe I should do like seven more thumbnails because I might have a pose that actually is better that I wouldn't have thought of if I didn't take the time to just give it an extra like five minutes of doing thumbnails. And uh, uh, I forgot which teacher, I think it was someone in college that told me the most important stage of doing art isn't the actual doing, it's the thinking beforehand. And what they meant by that is if you have the technical ability, you can, you can render anything, um, you can polish anything. And the, the joke in the class became, um, you can create, well, I can't say it on the stream, but you can create essentially poop. But uh, if, or if your concept's poop, you can polish it, but in the end, you'll just end up with a shiny turd. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking of that all the time because I, I, I sometimes just run with an idea before I really engage with it or before I uh, diversify my way of thinking about the idea. So that is something that I hope I can pass on to you. Now, the next thing I wrote down is to look up the meaning or symbolism or history. So even with crystals, I guess I'll keep using that as our example. Uh, like, let's say I want to do a citrine creature. C citrine's my favorite rock. And well, let me find out more about it. Like, what does it mean to people? What is it meant in history books? What does it look like when it's found in the rock? What does it look like when it's heated? And you can learn a lot about not only whatever subject matter you're working on, but you can learn a lot about how you then see the element that you're working with. So citrine, there's a lot of things I found out about this in the past week. I found that most citrine is actually more dull in color like this. And then the citrine that's more like this, with white with more amber, a lot of the times it's just amethyst that's been heated up. And in the process of heating it up, it turns from purple to this white golden color. And they do that because this is much cheaper than real citrine. And it kind of gives the same effect, but it kind of made me disheartened because I'm like, oh my gosh, all these oh. citrines are passing off as citrine, but they're just amethyst. Isn't that weird? And uh, I started to look up more about like what, why that is and what natural citrine looks like. And a lot of the times it's more dull, but it represents like the sun and light and uh, prosperity and wealth, all that good stuff. So then with those adjectives in mind, you start to think, okay, well, what does like wealth, prosperity mean to me? And then those adjectives become con or like conceptualize in your head of shapes or objects or uh, colors that you've seen before. And you'll start to see the swirling pattern of your mind, like piecing together um, different associations that you have with either words or um, adjectives, like I said. So I think it's really important once you kind of have an idea to really do research on what it is uh, and you might surprise yourself with what you will then find to include in your work. It's got an incubator in your brain. It's got Basically. a creature in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Slowly developing. I mean, for real. Yeah, the next thing I work or wrote was how would that be incorporated? So not only are you thinking about what it is, so... <laughs> Let's say, yeah, let's go back to citrine. But how would this be incorporated? So a lot of the times it's, okay, do I keep it as is, as a rock? Or do I shape it into something? Do I make it into a crescent? I could make it into um, a staff, a sword, whatever it might be. And what would the properties of that look like? And you have to think a little bit of functionality and practicality, where if you're going to have a crystal sword, there's a good chance that it might not function well as a sword. I mean, maybe it could, but I think it helps when uh, when you're incorporating ideas to have more of a practical um, under like a base to it. Unless if you're in this very over fantastical realm, I think Final Fantasy kind of gets away with it where you have things that aren't practical, but you, the viewer, whoever's looking at it, allows it to be okay because of the context of what it is. So I've been playing Final Fantasy X again, and uh, when you look at Lulu's whole outfit, it's very impractical for someone that's traveling um, a long distance or a long journey to have like this really heavy leather belt dress, essentially, with 
like fur and you know no cloth on top but it makes sense in the world and you're you're allowing it to make sense because everything is um, balanced with that same level of um, kind of craziness or kind of uh, um, what's it, not unrealistic impractical and I love when fantasy actually goes that far and I want to see more of it but you have to keep it consistent because if you have a very realistic world like a Game of Thrones world and then you have this one character that's made out of crystals and has like a crystal baton I just don't know if I it would fit or if it would work so you want to make sure that if you're incorporating it into whatever you're working on have it make sense and sometimes just asking yourself like how would this be seen or does this make sense to me in this world sometimes that can help uh, th the next thing I wrote was oh how is media portrayed or use them so oh you know what I was gonna have it highlighted on which one I was talking about <laughs> oh <laughs> um, so crystals, I, I'm sure for a lot of you that are watching, I mean, these are in basically every fantasy film game you can think of. But as I was thinking about it more, I mean, they've been in a lot of things that I grew up with. And maybe it was like a collective community pool of thinking. Because when you think of Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon, both are collecting crystals or having gems be a part of the story. And uh, that's not even including all the... 80s fantasy movies like Last Crystal or um, I mean heck even the labyrinth the crystal ball technically it's still a crystal well I guess more of like a glass orb but same same, same yeah. realm <laughs> and <laughs> um, what did they mean in those movies or in those games because I think a lot of times we can uh, use nostalgia to our benefit and like for me I really liked uh, I remember playing Final Fantasy XII when I was younger. Even though I didn't like the game at first, I mean, now I love I love it. But there's a city called Bujerba, and it's this floating city in the sky, and it has this giant crystal where there's like a mine underneath the land, but it's floating in the air. And I think it's the most beautiful uh, sky city that I've seen. And it's become kind of a cliche now where it's like sky cities and crystals. But uh, I thought they did such a good job with it. And to have the element of a crystal incorporated as like the base of a giant city. So you'll be surprised with how much, if you really, you know, dig into your brain, how much a subject matter has been seen or used in things that you've either watched or played. So as much as it's good to let that influence you, try not to just copy directly or just steal the idea. So even though I love the Bujerba city, if I did my own crystal type city, I want to make sure that it looks very different and has a different you know, story to it. Its meaning is different uh, because then you're not really being original. If I just redo Bajerba but made the crystal yellow instead of blue, I'm not really being that creative. You know, like how hard are you actually flexing your creative <laughs> muscle? And then the last thing I wrote um, was shapes and experiment with them. So even something like crystals, it's a very basic element to work with, but there is a lot there that you can implement in terms of shape and form. And if you're doing, let's say, a, what did I have here? A crystal creature. I remember Josh said last night, like having a tortoise with the shell having like a crystal back. Uh, and I do think it, it's important to not just throw crystals on top of something. I think you have to incorporate it in a way that makes sense. So for me, I, the initial thought is, okay, I'll just have a bunch of crystals coming out of the shell. But okay, let's dig deeper than that. And the more I thought about it is, oh, what if it, the whole shell was a crystal and then its claws and its eyeballs were a crystal? And then as you start to think of more and more things of like, okay, well, what if the crystals were infused with the turtle somehow or over you know years evolution has taken hold of this tortoise from where he lived in a cave or a mine and like maybe the beak of the tortoise or the I think it, they have a they have a little they don't have teeth they have like one they're cute little like is the, it a beak is it a called beak I do you guys know that it looks like a beak I but they're I called isn't their lip, yeah because they look kind of like these it's not like a bird beak but you know I think you guys know what I mean but imagine <laughs> if that had a little bit of that crystal element to it and maybe it was cut off and its body was more hardened made of like rock elements so obviously we're entering more of a fantastical realm here 
but I think uh, realizing, okay, well, what shape? So for me, the beak had a very similar shape as the crystal, that very triangular, sharp um, shape. And okay, well, the mouth, it was like attacking. And when I think sharp, that's what I think of. And you you can play around with these ideas and eventually you'll land on something that you might really love or you might stumble for a while and you not, might not find anything. And that's when I would honestly recommend just going to Pinterest or looking at your art books or heck, sometimes even just going outside. I think mm -hmm. finding inspiration when you're kind of going through that period of like trying to use your creative energy or trying to work it out, but nothing seems to land or stick. That's when I would then look at outside resources. I try my best not to start with looking at outside resources. I try to do like quick thumbnails or quick sketches. And then I try to look online or look in my art books that I have and try to find inspiration that way. Because I think too often we rely too much on the imagery that we find rather than re like experimenting with either different shapes or different ideas beforehand. So Saren says, turtles mouths are in fact called beaks. So yeah. Are they actually? Okay. Now I don't feel as bad. <laughs> so let's move on then. And that was my talk on creative muscle or how to work your creative muscle. So now let's actually start drawing. So I'm not just rambling the whole time. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to make this smaller. Oop. I'm going to move this in the corner here. I'm gonna, I'll read a couple of things while you're getting that set up. Uh, right. Anthony says, I'm working on the motherly matriarch for one of my races. She's basically my version of the golden stag of Artemis with elements of an oak tree and ivy in her biology. I'm also planning on adding glowing opal into the oak antlers. Ooh. Oh, yep. That's actually one of the things I wrote down was uh, antlers in the creature section. So that is a great idea. <laughs> Femme says, are my eyes and brain betray me? Or have I not seen that pin Tim is wearing before? Oh! It looks so elegant Oh my cool. gosh, I even told Josh before the stream starts, I need to market it. But essentially, this is the pin that uh, will be given to my Patreon backers at the end of this month. So if you want this pin for free, I know it's kind of hard to see in this little camera. It's, <laughs> and the, the, it's so shiny. <laughs> it's my demon's facade drawing, and I turned it into a pin. And uh, if you want it for free, you just sign up for my Patreon before the end of Saturday. And that's when we'll do the cutoff and we will start shipping them on Tuesday. So yeah, this is the pin that you can receive for free. And Femme, I believe you are a Patreon member. Maybe not. Uh, but if you are, you are going to be getting one. Okay, so let's talk characters. My favorite out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I drew a head example in case I need to draw on top of it. And I know I will. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of these different uh subject matters uh, from characters creatures environments and weapons and i'm gonna do like really quick thumbnail sketching so i'm gonna keep it very conceptual very loose and uh if you guys want to keep drawing on yours uh don't feel like you have to follow me or you know do what i'm drawing uh, i'm gonna go through a bunch of different ideas and that's what i think i wanted to use the stream for rather than have one final uh concept that i render out I'm going to go through a bunch of different ones um, to like, explore how taking the subject matter of a crystal can be uh, stretched and looked at many different uh, ways and using it in different ways. So that is what I'll be doing. Okay, so I know I've been talking a lot. I'm going to start drawing. Now, each of these are going to have about four different thumbnails that I'll create here. So the first one for characters when I think of a crystal. So, okay, so let's say you are given crystals as your subject matter and you're supposed to draw a character from it. So immediately my mind goes into, okay, well, what if it is a manifestation of the crystal? It's personified. So let me look at, let's see, what rock do I want to draw? You're beefy. Okay. And while I'm doing that, uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, and I'll let Josh kind of take over for a second here. Hmm. Oh, Felix, is that girl with horns one of your best sellers because of the gold leafing tutorial? Because that's how I found you initially. Yeah. I that video, it's I, I talk about it all the time on how strange it is because that is such such a weird video to go um, big on YouTube because it's there's no edits. 
Uh, I'm literally in my backyard. I'm barefoot, I think. And I'm just gold leafing a canvas talking about my process. I'm doing it. And it's it's not time lapse at all. It's not sped up. So it's like real time, half hour it takes about. <laughs> yeah, that one kind of came out of nowhere. It's a really long stream. So for that one to be like a popular one, I was like, I'm okay. I don't fully understand it, but I, I guess I'm okay with it, obviously. <laughs> but I think it would be really hard to recreate a video like that because I think it was just the right time. Um, and yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that is uh, the pin it's based off of. <laughs> Uh, Anthony says one of the things I have the hardest time with are rendering or rendered skin tones, especially since I don't like blending brushes. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't actually really use a blending brush uh, my whole time in college, really, when I was learning to paint skin. I almost primarily always work with the circle hard edge brush. So I think as long as you're you know working it enough where you're using the eyedropper tool a lot, and then picking up a color and then blending it in. And you don't need a soft edge brush. I was doing all my blending with a hard edge brush. Uh, just know it, it takes a little bit of time, but once you get used to it, you start to fly and you realize how fast you can really work. Actually, this creature's gonna be bigger. So then even for a concept like this, I'm looking at, okay, I kind of want a mixture of the elements of the earth alongside the crystals that will come out of the top of the rock, kind of how they would in nature. So I'm looking at the different shoulder pieces. Actually, this is probably a bigger creature than I was initially intending. And I'm keeping it very loose. I'm trying not to be too attached to anything I do in the thumbnailing stage because you want to be able to uh, change it and adapt it if necessary. Are you so doing like, a, you're doing a creature, right? No, this is a character. Character? Oh, okay. So this is a manifestation or like Ooh. it's personified. So like if this is the crystal, crystal head. I mean, I guess this could lean itself into the creature territory as well, but uh, I'm trying to personify it more here. Like these would be the hip bones. And of course, I love my Digimon proportion, so it's going to be really tall. Oh, Digimon. And then maybe it has like a giant arm on one side. So that's why, even though the initial inspiration was Citrine, I can kind of break off of that and start to look at, okay, well, how does the rock form um, these citrines and how would a character carry like these giant hunks of earth? So then immediately I'm thinking, okay, this is fantastical realm and I can kind of have fun with that then. I don't have to worry about do the proportions make sense in a like, humanistic way or things don't even have to be attached. I can let certain parts of the rock just be floating and you, you can just assume that the viewer will just apply their own magical knowledge and properties to it where it just makes sense. And I think we're so conditioned at this point to see magic in art or have things like floating or have a concept like this be given to us and we just understand it immediately. Hmm. Magic's awesome. <laughs> And Marie says, I have issues gauging when I, a piece I'm working on is done. I tend to overwork a piece where I maybe should have stopped. How do you know when a piece is finished and to put down your pencil? So normally I am able to look back from my piece. So I'll hold it further away from me and I'll kind of look throughout the drawing and I'll say, okay, what needs to be improved on or what, what looks finished to me? Um, if I get to a point where everything looks really really solid and I don't feel like there's anywhere where I can improve upon it, that's where I think I have to stop. And even if there's areas that's more undefined or more rough looking, sometimes that adds to the piece. And I think rendering it out can actually ruin uh, some of what you had beforehand. So I would personally 
uh, when you're near that like 90% stage of being finished, that's when I think you need to constantly kind of take break or not just take breaks, but uh, hold it away from you and really look at it as a whole, as a composition. Because there have been a lot of times where, like let's say this was my final drawing, like this, if this was on a piece of paper. If most of this was rendered, but I kept the area around here more loose, it might add to the drawing because by contrast, your eye is drawn up to here then. But if I rendered everything out, it might take away the focus in that um, bridge it had before where uh, it had like a really nice focus up here. So it might dilute it and it's hard to find a resting place on the drawing now. So I do think you have to take in consideration that over rendering doesn't, or rendering in general is usually a good thing, but there is a point where you enter the realm of over rendering. And I think I've, I've entered that so many times in my life and I wish I could take back some of those times because I think the drawing actually looked better before like the final 20, 30 minutes of me like edging out details in areas where it really didn't need it. And it actually took away from the overall um, effect and presence of the drawing. So yeah. Okay, so like this would be a physical manifestation of a crystal uh, creature. <laughs> oh my gosh, this moving thing is so frustrating to me because I want to move just the drawing. Yeah, it moves oh, it does the whole. Oh, it's like when you reshare an Instagram story, it does that. Oh, yeah. Does anyone else hate? Well, that's a whole other thing. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that drives me nuts when you try to resize like a GIF or a image in. Oh, Instagram yeah. story, and, and it'll grab like, the background. The thing. entire thing goes oh. with it, yeah. And then you have to like push it to the side and move. Oh, it's so awful. <laughs> okay, the next one. Oh, actually, I'll write what each of them are next to it. So, just mental notes for myself as well. So this was. Let me make it smaller. So this was manifestation. So and obviously this would be like my first thought that would come to mind if I was creating like a crystal character. Just make the character out of crystals. <laughs> a really kind of basic way of looking at it. And sometimes it works really well. I'm not saying that basic necessarily means bad. I think if you can make it your own through the shape language that you're using or the composition, something as simple as a crystal character can still be interesting. Okay, the next thing was um, accessories. So a headband, a crown, a necklace, a pendant, a halo. So this is where I wanted my head example. Move you here. So for something like this, I would probably go into more ornate uh, jewelry. And I would probably think of the way that Amano drew his jewelry in uh, Final Fantasy games. So it's like a lot of small either circular or angular shapes followed by like bands of silver or gold it's actually this is kind of mucha and art deco as well but i'm going to go around the piece here so imagine if this was a headband of some sort maybe a hanging crystal down here And obviously, if she or he, doesn't really matter, I guess, had hair, you could flow that around. So sometimes little touches like that can uh, have a big effect. But let's say we wanted to make it something more. So I'm glad I had this. I'm glad I drew a head before the stream started, because I would hate having to redraw a head every <laughs> single time. So the next one I wrote, oh, was a crown. So yeah, imagine that this was a a king of some kind or a prince. And a crown. Let me draw angular here. So I'd want a really sharp angular crown. And then the crystals would jut out from different spikes, different points in this crown. Ooh. And even though this one is, these are still crystals and both are jewelry, you can see how different of an effect. Um, they have. And maybe I'll do like a softer crystal crown as well so you can see what I mean by the difference between them. For the spikes that are in the background, I'll make kind of fade it out. And maybe 
a different pattern of some kind in the crown there. Something like that, where if you had a softer crown, move this. So if I was doing more of a inviting or more of a um, approachable crystal crown, probably have smaller spikes rather than like giant ones going all the way around like that. Probably have more uh, kind of hanging off. I think if you have a more loose, uh, or not loose, more staggered and more kind of random in their appearance, I think it does give a cross more of like an approachable uh, crown or design just because it's not so structured, it's not so, um, I don't know what the right word would be, not dominant. Uh, it doesn't have that aggressive um, look maybe. Uh, where like this feels more organic, more like of the earth, where the top one feels very forced and very specific on the placement. Anthony says the first one uh, reminds me of the princess from the never ending story. Oh, well, we I just love that design. <laughs> And actually, yeah, that is a great example of using, I'm pretty sure she has soft crystals. Well, when you think about it, even diamonds are technically gems. And um, I think I put, I kind of lump all of them into the same realm. And then the other one I had was a necklace. But you know what? I'm going to go a little more ornate. So I'm going to take that idea we had from the top one here. I'm going to have... So this is where like looking at different jewelry designs and like if you're not comfortable doing jewelry, well, this is the perfect time then to look at Pinterest and find some references of um, either jewelry patterns or, yeah, I mean, heck, even cosplays or original cosplays. So I think having a lot of loose like silver bands, or not bands, silver, not string, what was that, a chain? Yeah, right. And can create a nice, cool little fantasy effect here. I like that a lot. And then have like little crystals on certain parts of the hanging. It's like a two in one then. All right. And then I see a lot of people do like fun ear designs with either earrings or I mean, obviously, you can go crazy with earrings. Haven't you? You've tried wearing those, right? The little ones that clip to your ear like that. I mean, eventually, I'd love to get a real ear earring. I want to get my ear pierced, but not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And you, I honestly wouldn't even need much more than that. The last thing I wrote down was a halo, but this would probably be definitely more in a fantasy realm. Where like all four of these could kind of work in like a medieval sense or more of a more like a high fantasy where I think if you get really fantastical you get into the realm of like uh, not necessarily final well like Final Fantasy IX where there might just be like crystals floating around a character where I think a lot of fantasy today like modern fantasy is more rooted in realism so the, the Game of Thrones you know uh, the Vikings the any of those story or um, films or shows that you see today where everything is mostly realistic and like tangible but then like five to ten percent is magical so yeah so i'm gonna move oh gosh i'm not good at grouping things quickly that was why i really liked dark was it yeah dark crystal when we watched that mm -hmm. just because it was so the serious yeah it was so um it was so magical they didn't really even Care, <laughs> which is great. No, I love that. <laughs> Felix, the second one is Witch King of Ingmar, the Lord of the Rings character. But yeah, the crown actually kind of looks like that a little bit. Very spiky. Not made oh. out of crystals. Though. Oh, you know what? You now I know what you're talking about. I was like, who are you talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Because you saw the movie. I just recently watched 
Lord of the Rings for the first time. For those of you who didn't know, even though I love fantasy, uh, I have never seen them. And I still think Fellowship of the Ring, I think, is like near perfect for a fantasy movie. Nice. The other two are fine, but I think the first one really nailed it on the head for me. That one's pretty special. Uh, okay, the next one I wrote, Gems are the Life Source. Ooh. So, okay, well, what if... And I'll do a kind of a quicker one for this. So let's say you have this kind of floating figure. Actually, this is going to probably look very Angelarium. And you have like a hole cut out in the center. And like the crystal is in the center here. Actually, maybe it has like a really ornate case. Remember, with thumbnails, it doesn't have to be pretty. I sometimes have to remind myself that because... Uh, this is gonna sound dumb, but I have so many art books where even their thumbnails look really pretty. So I think I've been conditioned, even when I was doing arts uh, for CG Cookie, that even my thumbnails had to be pretty. And I, I'm still trying to break away from that because I still think there's some sense of if anyone's gonna see this, it needs to look good. I don't want anyone to see this. Actually, I don't want to give it armor. What the heck? There we go. Uh, even if it's just like a small part of my sketchbook because now that i make books there's this pressure of everything i make could be in a sketchbook so i want even thumbnails to look pretty that's a whole other thing i think doing it live in stream helps some men too no i think it makes it worse why because i think there's more pressure because for sure people are going to see this <laughs> where if i was just drawing like on the couch yeah it doesn't really matter if my thumbnails are that pretty because it's just me like when i stream i'm like okay i want to make sure that this is acceptable for being live i don't want people to come here let's say from instagram and they're like oh yeah tim seems to be pretty decent with a pencil and his drawings are pretty good and they come to a stream and they're like is he paying someone else to draw for him like, what what is this garbage <laughs> no. oh for sure well i think the beauty of it is that you get you get to talk it out while you're doing it so people are like seeing you seeing the concept and then you can move on from it well also true so imagine in this case, if the crystal, I'm trying to go a little faster because I realize I'm going way too slow. <laughs> if the crystal was like the source of its energy or if it was, say, a creature. Oh, no, I'm still on characters. Uh, actually, yeah, let me try that instead. So I guess while I'm drawing, because I have to draw a body here, do we have any more comments or are people just busy? I think people are busy drawing right now. Or you know what, it's going to be basically the same thing. So that is essentially like, if it's the life force, I try to have it in the center and I have it like radiating out. Maybe there's a bubble here. And like this idea I would want to explore more because I think just throwing it in the center, okay, that's a good place to start. But then from here, you know, okay, let's look at this idea like a prism, like I said earlier, and let's try to be uh, creative with it. So this is one of those that I think if I had more time, I would explore this idea more and see where we can go from it. Oh my God, I'm going to do that all stream where I'm going to try to resize it. Oh, Literally all stream I'm going to do that. What if he's like heating it and it's changing colors like crystals do to symbolize oh, kind of cool. how we change? Oh, no, I liked it until you said that. <laughs> <laughs> But I like the idea of if, if it was an amethyst creature that could turn into a citrine creature, if it just heated itself up. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Right? That'd be kind of fun. Because it gives a little, you know, teaching moment as well. <laughs> and the last one, oh, basically that gems are floating around or near. So I don't even need to do a separate thing for this. I think I'll just copy one of the heads here. I like this one. Copy it. Hmm. So for this one, maybe, you know what? I'm going to give her some hair first. Uh, when I think of really elaborate, like silver lining or like yarn like this, I do think of Sarah from the Labyrinth in her ballroom outfit. I think it's. One of those that a lot of my generation, if you're a millennial, if we saw this movie as a kid, I think we thought, or at least I know a lot of the friends I talked to, just that is such a gorgeous dress and gown and hair uh, design. And 
I still like it to this day. It's, it, I don't think it's like a nostalgia clouding my judgment. I still look at it and I'm like, yeah, no, it's still pretty baller. So the crystal's floating around. You can either do like a pure circle effect. Oh, these are horrible little gems. There we go. I think the Final Fantasy XIV has a lot of like crystal stuff in it too. Oh, like floating around the head. Um, yeah, they'll have like floating crystals. Obviously, they have the like, crystal tower in the game and stuff like that, even too. So yeah, I think it's really easy to just have crystals floating around. Uh, I was playing Final Fantasy X yesterday, and there's spells called Null Shock. I feel like that's hard for my Midwestern accent. <laughs> but it's N-U-L and then like Shock or Frost or whatever. And basically there's these orbs that float around a character, and it'll absorb the first lightning spell that's thrown at them. But it kind of looks like a floating gem in a bubble. And it has like all these properties like that. So I think having things that float around a character, I, I'm, I've always been obsessed with those. Probably because of my influence as a kid and even playing, um, I know there's more fantasy games when I was younger that had like floating orbs and stuff around them. And I think even to this day, I still like that idea that it's not something that you're consciously controlling. It's just, you know, around you. So I think adding crystals floating around a character can be really cool. But honestly, something like this, like the way that I did it, kind of looks a little messy, if I was honest with myself. I'd probably keep it a little more controlled or have like a meaning. Or even if it's like a halo effect behind them, where the spikes are coming out. Oh, actually, I think I already like this better. Ooh. Yeah. Where the rocks are radiating from the earlier, seemingly radiating out of the character. Let me take this nonsense out of the way. And kind of space them out. And maybe we have like a inner ring that has smaller ones, or maybe even longer ones. And obviously, then you're entering the territory where it kind of gives this almost religious look or like a holy look. So you want to make sure that what you're depicting is kind of aligned with the concept or the idea behind the character because you don't want to try to create like a witch and you know someone that's like a swamp witch but then have this angelic halo effect around her because mm -hmm. it might it might read you know off it could work i'm not saying it can't but i think initially when i think of that it just it doesn't feel like it would fit right let me create that orb or delete that orb All right, something like that. I'm going to do that all stream. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh. This, I'm so used to Photoshop that this is going to take a second sometimes when I'm moving things around. Okay, corner it Beautiful. out. All right, so that is things floating around. Anthony says, I honestly, you could stream for seven hours and I wouldn't complain. It's always uh, fun working on my projects while watching these. Oh, well, thank you. No, I'm glad. And I hope some of you are actually working on a crystal creation because I, I kind of want to see what people have uh, because I'm going to just be scattered this whole stream <laughs> with the different things that I'm going to be drawing. I mean, I'm still down for the 24 hour stream. Just pushed him to creative limits. You know, I almost <laughs> thought about it. Like I, if we did a 12 hour stream, I'm not opposed surprisingly that'd be interesting well and i, I kind of want it to be like okay we have 12 hours how many it'll be like how many of something can we draw so like hands are usually a big thing for people but i've drawn illustrations with hands before but imagine if we had a 12 hour stream where literally okay let's see how many hands i can draw in 12 hours oh gosh <laughs> i'm sure by hour eight sounds I'm horrible like, yeah get me out of this hell <laughs> okay moving on we're gonna go on to chris uh, creatures so these are different ways that you can incorporate crystals into characters so let's talk about creatures 
Now, like we said, this one kind of can bend into the creature territory. What I wrote on my notes is it's more than just throwing sh crystals on top. So if you're drawing like a lion that you want to incorporate crystals, don't just draw a lion with crystals coming out of the back. I mean, I think you can, and I've seen games and animes that have done that. I just don't feel like it's that creative. Uh, it can work. I've seen some things that have like one crystal out of the back or like two, and it just feels fresh because it's not just a cluster of crystals on the back of something. Uh, but normally it's like, ah, uh, I think they can explore that idea more. So the first thing I wrote down was the gem itself or if it has a rock body. Oh yeah, so I can move there here. So kind of talking about the tortoise that we were talking about earlier, I'm gonna draw, oh God, I don't know what a turtle looks like off the top of my head. Oh, this is gonna look kind of rough. Where is it? Its eye is like here. Hold on, clearly I need to look up a picture of a tortoise before I just eyeball Gotta this. use those creative muscles. No, <laughs> not here. This is this would be embarrassing if I tried it all. This is more of like a, one of those challenges that I used to do, like a blind art challenge. That's rough. Just because like... Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks horrible. The details. Horrible. Oh, they're so cute though, look at them. <laughs> All right, so like, let's say I was drawing, oops, zoom out then. Let's say I was drawing this tortoise. I'm gonna do a really quick drawing of it. And immediately I'm thinking, okay, how can I incorporate the crystals into the tortoise itself? So when I wrote down the gem itself or having a rock body, I'm now thinking, okay, the entire creature now has to be gem-like and have these different facets and planes of um, crystals throughout. And I just kind of picked the first image that I found and I'm running with it here. I'm gonna change it up a little bit though. So if I was creating this for concept art, let me see what it would look like. Uh, I'd probably be given the concepts from an art director or something and I would have to give a few variations of the same idea. So if I was to draw this crystal tortoise, I can't just draw one and be done. I have to draw a few different designs, different shapes, uh, different incorporations of the crystal. Felix, I'm down for 12 hours of hands. Mine always yeah. look like bony hot dogs. <laughs> bony hot dogs. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I'm not opposed. So, I mean, maybe sometime in the future. I think once certain things get done, like once I'm fully finished with the book, once it's like off to print, yeah, I think I'd be okay doing a 12-hour stream. So now from here, okay, if this was my underdrawing, okay, now I'd really want to break up you know, the different sections of the tortoise to have more of that crystal effect on it. Now, since I'm kind of new to doing this, the first few times that I'm probably creating a crystal creature or like an animal like this probably is going to look like hot garbage. And I'm okay knowing that because I know like this is just experimenting. And I think for a, a while, especially my early 20s, everything I did, kind of going back to the thumbnail thing, everything had to be perfect. And if I didn't get it on the first try, uh, I would struggle with the, that concept and, and I would force it to work. And in the end, usually it didn't work. Uh, it was just the best that I could do with what you know I gave to myself. Oh, you know what this is starting to look like? This is looking like Porygon, the Pokemon. Oh, actually kind of a like little bit. Like a turtle version of Porygon. <laughs> um, so I think that would be like, my first idea of, okay, well, clearly this tortoise thing, that I didn't really like it when the whole body was the rock. And then I think this is where your mind starts to explore, okay, well, let's try it again. But what if the crystal itself is the, the shell, kind of like what uh, Josh uh, mentioned to me the other day, or yesterday. I'm gonna do my best not to make this one look like Squirtle. 
Oh, well, she says I've been straight up going for the crystal cluster in the back thing for like 20 minutes now. Ah, it's okay if you do. Like I said, it can still work. I think it usually depends on how you incorporate shape language into it and uh, give some sort of purpose to why the crystals are growing out of the back of a creature. Because to me, that usually reads as like infected with crystals. I think of like Last of Us, but rather than it being mushrooms and fungus, it's like with crystals. There is a game with I was crystals, just thinking of that. I can't remember what it was, though. Is it Crystal Chronicles? Is that what happens to them? I can't remember. No, there's a game crystal that Chronicles. there's like a disease and it you turn into a crystal. Like crystals will like... Oh, technically that's in Final Fantasy XIII. The main cast, they get infected and they have a certain amount of time before they're turned into a crystal. I believe. Oh gosh, yeah. No, they're turned into... Well, I don't know. If any of you know what we're talking about... <laughs> Something where they get infected yeah, and crystals spew out of their body. <laughs> so I didn't, I'm going to keep moving on because I realized we're already like an hour into the stream and I'm not even halfway. So I'm going to keep going. But basically I would take this idea and I would explore it because a crystal tortoise could work. But the first idea of just turning the entire body, the entire shell, the entire you know head, arms into a crystals might not be the thing. It, you can't just assume that because it's different, because this is unique, that it'll be good. Uh, there's a meme I saw of art. Um, it was like, there's a difference between art that is unique and, oh, what was it? It was something, basically the whole point of it was it had a hammer, but instead of a hammer, it was like a marshmallow top and like a, a rubbery handle. And it was talking about, yeah, your tool might be unique, but it doesn't get the job done. And I remember being like, oh, that's a great way to put it. Hmm. Okay. The next thing I wrote were animal infusions. So this one I think yeah, I can have more fun with. So I remember initially when I was going to do this stream, I wanted to do a lion. And you know what? Before I even do this, let me make let me reference a lion here. Because I think if you're going to have something have the likeness of something that already exists in the world, you want to make sure that it kind of reads that way. Otherwise, it can look like, once again, hot garbage. Oh, Astrid. <laughs> this lion. Yeah. Every time I see these, I'm like, these are ancestors of Astrid. Somehow, Astrid's more of an ant. Her ancestors are probably more of the blobfish. We got here. <laughs> Somehow we got from here to Astrid. It's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if I had my line, actually, I got to keep zooming out. See, even in concepting, I stay too zoomed in. I got to learn to stay zoomed out. Oh, you're going for detailing right away? Mm-hmm. Well, like, I, I try to get it more fantastical immediately. So I'm looking at the hairs on this reference, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to blow them out quite a bit more. Uh, Melinda says, would old crystal shells have a lot of chipped off parts and fractures? Old crystal what? Would old crystal shells have a lot of chipped off parts and fractures? I mean, possibly. Um, it kind of depends on the crystal. Like, there's a hardness to certain crystals. So if it was, I mean, I'm not a rock expert by any means, but I assume like a diamond. Obviously, you don't really see a lot of chips and inks on those. But if you look at I mean, I guess quartz. Quartz seems like it would be easy to crack and... It can get to a point where it liquefies somewhat too, right? Does it really? I would think. If it got hot enough? Maybe not, though. Could it, like, melt? Like, if it got struck by lightning, would it just blow it, like, chip it in a bunch of bits? Probably. I mean... I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. I don't know the... We need to start experimenting. We're going to be on the roof just <laughs> during an electric storm. So I think when I'm, I'm talking about animal infusions, I'm taking the base of an animal and then I'm kind of making it fantastical. And I'm playing around with like different shapes. So when I'm thinking of citrine, I think of the sun. I think of energy, wealth, prosperity, strength. And that's why I chose a lion. So I might start with like a simple lion base, but then I'll start to rearrange it. And then maybe, maybe it's like a hollowed out kind of sphere where the head or the face should go and there's just a crystal sitting inside of it. 
And then all of a sudden I can break away from the realism that was the lion and I can pull back and maybe change the other things. Like maybe instead of the whiskers, it has more of an ornate uh, kind of filigree design on the mouthpiece. So then what might start as a lion could eventually turn into something that doesn't even resemble a lion at all. But you have this kind of unique, uniquely shaped crystal creature. And this is usually my favorite type of way of experimenting with something is take something from realism or from life and then mold it into something completely different. And then over time, yeah, you might lose the lion completely, but that's kind of the point. Uh, Unless if you want it to really read as lion. I mean, I can still keep like the paws and the stature and it would still read as something that's lion-esque. But I would change it enough where it's like, oh, but what, what is this? And I look at a lot of RPGs and the way that they construct their creatures. And a lot of them clearly are derived from life, but then they make it their own through uh, the way that they... Uh, change it up or give them extra limbs or make them longer or scalier or whatever it might be. I really like this one. The, our lion? Yeah. So yeah, do all those little fun ornate things. And then if you want to come back in and add like a, a more crowny embellishment to all of this. So like I said, this is something that you can play with for a long time and I would continue with this, but I want to keep moving. <laughs> oh gosh, oh. the whole stream I'm going to do that. Anthony says I'm reminded of the last, or I'm reminded of the time in the last Airbender with the rock candy. <laughs> I think we were talking about the crystal disease. Oh, <laughs> that's right, where it like slowly engulfs them. <laughs> I don't think it's rock candy, is it? I think it's a ring. I'm pretty sure they put on a rock ring and it like slowly, like ate them. Or not ate them, but embodied them. But I do kind of want rock candy now. Oh, it so was rock candy because then Boomy at the end like eats it. Oh. That's right. You guys are right. You guys. Are I don't right. know if I remember that one. Uh, so the next thing I wrote down was, oh, antlers, horns, and claws. So when I think of gems and when you look at them, they kind of already resemble like a claw or a tooth. And you can utilize that into your drawing. But like I said, kind of the same thing with like incorporating crystals in the back. You don't want to just like make a snake creature and instead of fangs, it just has crystal fangs. Like if you're going to do that, try to incorporate more than just that. Even if it's just the color palette or something more than um, just replacing. But if you are going to do replacing, I still think, like I said, I'm not saying that it doesn't work. But I think if you want to dig a little deeper, uh, I would go for more than just your first idea. So we need to type in deer here. Hmm. Okay, so if I was doing a deer and I was going to give it crystal antlers, I'm trying to think of, I'm sure this has been done many, many, many times before, but I'm trying to think of any movie or show that I've seen that has done this. Do any come to your mind right away? No. I mean, I think of like a stag, but I don't think I've even seen a stag with crystal antlers. There's got to be some game that you or I have played. I'm like, there's got to be some Final Fantasy that I've played that has that. There's like this game in my head right now, but I don't know what the game is. But there's a game that involved like crystal, a lot of crystal creatures and stuff. It had to be maybe a Final Fantasy thing, though. That's what I keep thinking. Yeah. But even last because night, that's the only thing I could think of. I think that that's way. why I was getting so worked up last night about like why I was getting frustrated. It's like this should be really easy finding references of uh, crystal concept art, but it was actually really difficult. And even like all my Final Fantasy books, yeah, people might have a lot of gems, and there might be like one crystal enemy. Yeah, that's basically just a rock enemy with some crystals, but there aren't a lot of crystal concept art that I I knew of or that was easy to find. Yeah, Tim was having a night last night with that, just trying to figure out something. I think, though, I, I learned that I need, I can't even listen to music, really. I think I need, like, silence, almost. I think your brain's going so fast, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So with crystal, I think if I was to make these antlers crystallized, I'll oh, show in a yeah. second. What? Dark Souls has a few. Actually, that could be what I'm thinking of. Dark Souls has some really cool crystal ones. Well, really quick, while you're looking that up, actually, let me look my this over. So for this deer, if I was going to make this a deer with gem antlers, I'm going to pull that fantastical element all the way throughout. So I'm going to pull in these kind of fun shapes, make the fur a little more swirly, maybe extend the fur out, because I, I don't want it to just look like a realistic deer with gems coming out of the head where the antlers should go. I want to incorporate more of that fantastical element into the body as well. I think a lot of uh, concept art games do a really good job of this lately, where they'll take what is familiar and something that you find in uh, real life and make it ex extra kind of surreal and fantastical through all these like little elements and details that they add on top and throughout, really. Little Dark like Souls that. has some good ones now that I remember. Oh yeah. Actually Finally that went back me. to the one where like the entire creature is made out of a crystal. But they do a good job at giving it a structure, a shape to it that feels unique. Oh yeah, and then the crystal sage. Ooh. This actually I might want to play this game sometime and you could watch because I feel like this might there might be some good concepts in the game when you watch it. I mean, I do like watching that one. Same with Bloodborne. I didn't like playing it as much, uh, Oh, yeah. but I, I love watching. I, could, play I don't it. think I could watch you play those games. I think you'd be... <laughs> Tim is very meticulous when he plays video games. I'm kind of known for being not the most watchable because like, even with Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, I would only use the boomerang and it drove my roommates nuts at the time. Oh yeah, near. Oh, and near Automata. It's just the little. I love not robot. fighting at all because there's a robot that floats around with you, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let the robot do all the work, and I'm just gonna kind of run around the outside of the battlefield. <laughs> Miserable. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not the most fun to watch play video games. I mean, even Bioshock, I try to have like the turrets or other things do the work for me. Uh, I try to play games where I take like the least amount of damage. So games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, I mean, I guess that's kind of the point, but you don't have like other ways of getting around it. You kind of have to fight. You know? Yeah, it forces you. Uh, anyways, I'm spending way too much time on this deer here. So I'm going to move that over as well. So obviously it's a little harder to tell in black and white. You know what? Let me add a little something something really quick. So it's easier to see. Uh, Munich says, I'm feeling kind of insecure to experiment with shapes and stuff as long as I don't know how to draw the thing. So I kind of get stuck with no, the first idea with graphics. Gotta get first. So are they saying they don't feel comfortable rendering out? Yeah, I'm feeling kind of insecure to experiment with the shapes and stuff as long as I don't know how to draw the thing. So I kind of get stuck on the first idea with reference. Refs. Oh. I think I feel... it's, well, Lord, do you want to say something? Oh, no. I was, you go. Uh, let me write these out really quick. This was infusion. I mean, even with these, like, different ideas I'm giving you um, today. Well, okay, let me take it back. If you're having trouble exploring an idea, um, especially without reference, I think it's, probably a mixture of you might be one younger you might not have a, a large visual library to pull ideas from uh, and three you might just not have drawn enough where you've experimented with different shapes and different uh, structures or compositions or whatever it is before that you can kind of rely on turning to for future concepts so for me like i know if i was ever given like let's say fantasy female mage 
I should be able to knock that out of the park. <laughs> if I'm not able to do a, a good job on that, I, I clearly am not able to rely on past experiences on what I know works and what I know will work well on that type of a character. So for me, like drawing this tortoise, clearly this does not work. Um, but I, I've never drawn a tortoise before, really. And I've never really drawn a creature that is made entirely um, of crystal that's supposed to still represent an animal. So I know, okay, this is going to be pretty weak and poor. But that's okay, because I know my strengths lie kind of more in this. But if I wanted to get better at this, I really got to explore a lot of that. And I can't just assume that the first time I try drawing something, it's going to be amazing. And I think that's kind of this weird... Uh, expectation that social media has created where even if you're not a big artist even medium artists or smaller artists they feel that everything they have to produce has to be worth sharing and uh, worthy of being seen or uh, original or good whatever that uh, you interpret as and I'm telling you it's okay to experiment I wish more artists did I wish I did more where you kind of have fun drawing things that might not make a final concept or might not make a art book or a sketchbook that you're going to sell one day and you're nervous that everything you have to create has to be in there. Uh, because I think that's where the most growing actually happens. Where like if I was to draw a sorcerer female mage or whatever it was that I said, I'm not really learning that much by doing it. I might like learn a different angle that I like or a certain crystal or a certain pattern that I liked. But I kind of already know the structure of it. I already kind of know the different things I'm going to add, the hair, the way I'm going to style it, the dress. And I probably wouldn't be learning that much. But if someone was like, I need you to draw a spaceship made out of Magnum. Yeah, or Magma. Yeah, I think that would be a little harder for me to conceptualize and I wouldn't go into it as confident. So what I hear when you say that is you, you're not feeling as confident. And I'm telling you that it, it just comes from experience and being able to rely on past successes. And I don't know if this helps you, but something to think about is you want to fall or fail all the time in art. And a quote that I uh, found last year was, if you fail, fail forward. So even if you're failing, you're still making progress, even if you don't know it. Even if you're not thinking that it's progress, it is. Because, okay, now that I got this, um, crap out of my way. If I wanted to do another crystal tortoise, I know I wouldn't take the initial direction I took with my first one. And that's why thumbnailing and conceptualizing and thumbnailing is so important because I think oftentimes that gets overlooked for the final render. Okay, the next thing I wrote was a golem. Oh, so okay, when it comes to crystals, you know what? I mean, this is basically anything where it's like a giant rock has eyes on the bottom. Usually these are like cute say this is his hands there's so many golems in wow i've learned are there really yeah like this is the golem right yeah so all oh, you have to do oh, oh. <laughs> oh get out of here so all you'd have to do is like turn a chunk of it into <laughs> the crystal part come here come give me a hug you get can big golem <laughs> i'm taking out the feet i like those feet Actually, it almost more looks like fire. But, I mean, you kind of get the idea. It's basically where you can just turn a giant piece of rock into, like, a rock creature. I mean, similar to this one, but it's less humanistic or humanoid and more of, like, cutesy. Or even, I've been playing Final Fantasy X again. I'm trying to think of a rock creature in Final Fantasy X. You know what? I was thinking of the whatever the slime versions in Final Fantasy are, whatever these things are. I forgot what they're called. Um, I can't think of them. But I know I know there's a rock creature I just fought. Well, anyways, I can't think of it. But basically... It wasn't Sin. Um, what no. was that what was the thing you are fighting while fighting well, Sin? Sin spawn, technically. But that's yeah. more like metal. Oh, okay. Which I guess metal's rock, kind of. Yeah, in a way. In a yeah. way. That's more like structured metal, though, not as organic looking. But basically, if you want to make a creature look like it's a rock creature, it's really easy just to throw eyes on something. Or if you want it to be a little less uh, cutesy, let's see here. Oh, immediately I was like, oh, yeah, let's throw the eyes down there. 
I really like big foreheads on creature design. It's so cute. It is really cute. <laughs> Let's say we wanted something more angry looking. Cat seer. Demi tomato. Oh, Demi -tomato. hello Demi -tomato. kitty. Tomato. And Josh, gosh, but gosh. Cat. <laughs> so cat is my best friend in the world. We've known each other since K5 and her and Josh have become very close as well. And she runs her own fitness channel. And I've been doing the 30-day challenge that she's been running throughout January. So if any of you guys want to get fit uh, and be like you know, strong artists, that is where you can go and turn to. I've not done them near as much as Tim. Oh, but I don't know if you can see the arms right now, but I've definitely been getting a little bigger. <laughs> From the four workouts that you did? Five. <laughs> <laughs> any number Tim says, I always add one to it just to be like... <laughs> <laughs> so it might not, not actually be five. Oh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of the bomb bombs. You know how they're like the... Oh, gosh, yeah. And they have like the little haunter hands. On 14, they will like one shot. So if you stand on them too close and they blow up. Oh, same with 10. If they blow up, I mean, you're dead. You're dead, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's where it's a gift of... You have to hit them before. three times. Yeah. So yeah, that would be like a way of incorporating the rock itself and the crystal into a creature without it reading as humanoid. Let me get rid of all this nonsense. Kat says, I'm so proud of you guys for doing the challenge. Well, thank you, Kat. Thank you, Kat. It's been really good. Oops. Actually, I like, um, I think I like being home sometimes for working out too. <laughs> yeah, I would agree to that. Okay. Um, where are we at? Oh, we're already in hour 15 in. Okay, I'll try to move these pretty quickly here. So the environments. So when I'm thinking about environments, I'm immediately thinking, Tim, back out. You don't know how to draw environments. But in this case, since I have to, uh, I'm thinking of three things. One, I'm thinking of, well, especially if I'm incorporating crystals, I wrote down, I'm thinking about building the city or whatever, the town, whatever environment you're creating around um, the gem itself. So in this case, imagine if we had a giant gem. I'll draw this as quick as I can. Huh? Actually, the environment ones are pretty easy now that I'm thinking about it. Even though I'm, I'm not the most skilled in drawing environments, I think a lot of that has to come down to I don't draw environments that much. So it'd be kind of foolish of me to assume I can draw environments really well if I, I don't really draw them that much. So drawing a city around the crystals, it might look something like this. And usually you see crystal cities where they're like on top of a mountain of some kind. Usually having like big structural pieces like a bridge or um, a castle top of some kind or a steeple will help kind of clarify that this is supposed to be more structural and architectural, which I think is usually difficult for me because I like to think in like fluid shapes and lines. And uh, when you're thinking about architecture, you really do have to think more in uh, straight lines, edges, uh, the weight balancing of things. Oh yeah, in Fort Final Fantasy fourteen, there's this place called Pharaoh Sirius, and a siren lives on top of it. But this is the building, because when the meteor hit, it crashed crystals through like random buildings. Oh. So then, like during the day, it's just this giant oh, crystal cool. pierced through the tower. I thought they couldn't do a normal crystal; they had to make it look like this fiery. Yeah. I mean, kind of cool because it looks like it's still on fire. It was technically like a piece of the moon, I guess, but. Still oh. crystal-y. So yeah, in this case, it would be like giant crystals, and then maybe we have some town within. So you can see how the crystals essentially create the silhouette of the shaping that you're doing, and then you let the architecture be what is built around it. I mean, obviously, I'm not the best at drawing environments. Let me see here. Um, let me catch up on some comments then, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Cedric says, I've only done one, and I, now I can't come up with anything else. One crystal creation? I mean, so, even yeah. if you have one that you feel really confident about, go for that. You don't have to create 30 different concepts like I'm doing for the stream. This is more or less to show...
different ways of executing crystals within your work, but I'm totally okay if you want to just take one and kind of render it out so that when I show your guys' submissions live, if it's like a more clean render or a cleaner in an hour and a half time span, um, that's totally fine. Um, hmm. Junk Box Extra says, Tim may have better luck with Yu-Gi-Oh card art. They have crystal monster archetypes. Oh, you know what? I do remember some of them. I definitely collected Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. I played in tournaments back in the day. I still can't believe that. <laughs> I won. Well, it was with like eight of my friends, but I won. <laughs> oh, they actually have an Emerald Tortoise card. No, they don't. Yeah. Oh, look how cute. Okay, actually, so this one works. So even though it's crystals thrown on the back, it's not just like a jumble of them. There's a structure to it, and it kind of makes sense. Where it feels like if it did grow organically in this fantastical realm... The way that they layered the gems, actually, could you put this in the Discord in the stream fall? Oh, yeah. Um, and I like that they threw more of the incorporations of crystals down into the arms and stuff. You'll see it if you join the Discord. Oh, actually, while, I'm, while that's happening, so this is basically an example of built around the gem. So if you want the city to basically be around the gem. And the next thing I wrote was a gem or crystal castle, not to be confused with the band, but if I wanted my crystal to essentially be the actual castle that people live in, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to think of examples, or I guess, did Elsa listen? I think Elsa lived in a crystal castle that she created, more ice then, but you know, same type of feel. I know there's, I feel like it was one of those old Rankin and Bass animations for like the, the people that did Rudolph and uh, the claymation stuff yeah. and the stop motion. I'm pretty sure one of them had Father Christmas or Father Winter, or it was a bad guy. He lived in a crystal castle. And it was very simple in design, something like this. <laughs> Visionary, we're getting to you soon. We're just getting through some of the older chat stuff still. Oh, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Um... Anthony says, dealing with the colors for this character is making me consider going straight up pencil artist. <laughs> well, what are you drawing that's so difficult? Anthony's working on the, um, he's doing the stag with the opal and the... Oh, that's right, that's the right. antlers, yeah. Well, opal is a difficult gem. Actually, if you can pull it off, though, it's really great. But I would just pull up, like, a few different references and try to really look at how is that gem um, emitting color. And I think that'll help you. So don't try to just eyeball it. Like really take um, from example. <laughs> Wishy, Bloodborne and Souls games are beautiful, but I always cry after like an hour of playing. From yeah, being too be difficult? Or... Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, is I it actually difficult. a sad story? I would think that's why you're crying. I mean, some of the parts can be sad. It's like so desolate and hopeless sometimes when you're playing, especially in those worlds. <laughs> so this was an example of actual crystal castle. And then the last thing I wrote, oh, so if, if it's like a crystal forest, so you have minor elements of crystals kind of littered throughout, um, but it's not like the main focus. There's not like one big one or you're not walking within a crystal so i'll kind of show an example of that um, visionary says found i'm a huge fan of your art do you have a course and then do you consider your patreon tutorial course course tier uh i used to do tutorials full time when i worked at a company called cg cookie and i haven't done them in a little while like straight up tutorials but um one of our roommates is moving out in uh, March and we're hoping to move all this recording stuff and all this streaming stuff in the basement and create like a nice recording room and I, I have been kind of thinking and toying with the idea of doing tutorials again and I'm kind of excited so we'll, sometime after March I wouldn't be surprised if I start rolling out tutorials for my patreon backers and then three months later I'll post them public on YouTube so that's usually how I'll keep it Anthony says I would look at Deloran and Exodar from World of Warcraft. Exodar, I actually came upon randomly 
recently because I just started playing WoW within like the last few months. So it's like I'm still some of the older areas or zones I've not gotten into. Um, oh, there was one zone too. I can't remember the name of it. It was like a big dome around it and it was a wine. Um, they made wine there. It was really pretty because they had like ornate crystal structures and stuff in there though too. Oh, I was like, yeah, where are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Josh just talking about the World of Warcraft. All right. It's any excuse I can get. <laughs> <laughs> World of Warcraft? Yeah. Did, did someone mention World of Warcraft? I'm like, no, I'm no. <laughs> You're like, well, there's this forest. <laughs> oh, just keep going with it then. <laughs> uh, Visionary, are your old tutorials enough, though? Are my They're old? fine enough. <laughs> um, I mean, they're fine. I I would say I would want to update a lot of them because I feel like I've gained so much knowledge. And I think they would be more specific on pencil stuff, but not just pencil like technique. Kind of like what we're doing today is a small example of, uh, obviously I would cut it way down and I have time lapses and I would have it nice and sweet and short. But I think a lot of what I want to talk about how to create art in uh, general, not even just in the industry, but just in general, is kind of building your confidence and I think the mental state behind doing art is so important because there's a lot of, uh, I believe, how to execute well and just believing that you can execute something well. And I think if you can't believe you can't do something, well, guess what? You're not going to be able to do it then. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to talk about how to improve that mindset and how to go into things um, overly confident to a point where you're expecting yourself to fail and being okay with it. Okay, so right now I'm just basically stealing from a Bravely Default art book where I'm kind of generalizing some of the shapes I'm seeing here because I want to show if this was like a simple little house, town, or uh, if you came across a little village where your party needed to rest, let's say. Uh, maybe there's some crystals incorporated around the house. Then maybe... Actually, no, I was going to have crystals be the smokestack, but I'm like, that doesn't really make sense. Oh, Amber, love the glasses, Josh. Thank you so much. I actually have, um, these are those blue light glasses. Mm -hmm. And I bought these really nerdy looking ones for gaming because they help with wearing head a headset. <laughs> They're pretty rough looking. Did you order them already? Do... What was that? Did you order them? I did order them, yeah. I think they're gonna take a bit to get here though, but I like these ones too. All right, so let's say this is a little village or whatever it is that you're coming up to. All right, thank you Bravely Default for letting me steal from you. So imagine all these crystals kind of lining down the path. Maybe a bigger one, maybe there's like a well, or no, maybe not even a well, maybe there's some kind of a shrine to a crystal that they keep in an abandoned well. So bigger. So this is where the crystals or the gems become an element uh, as like an accessory rather than being like the main focus. And I think it, it really helps embellishing areas with crystals if you want to give off this magical effect. Um, it could be something as obvious as you know a giant crystal that's in a well. I almost want it to be like in a glass case of something like that or like little elements or just kind of growing off the side in the forest maybe a few here so that would be my way of incorporating crystals on like a smaller effect so as a minor element rather than the focus like that this is eventually how i kind of want to draw environments but obviously a little more uh, clear but I was paging through the Bravely Default book yesterday and I was like, oh, this is this feels right for me on how to draw environments where things are more silhouetted out and have more of an outline and you let negative space kind of fill in with uh, the viewer's imagination, which I like. So I'll probably do more of that if I draw more environments. So now the last one, what time are we at? Oh, perfect. So I'll only spend like 10 minutes on this and then we'll start sharing all of your guys' creations if you wanted to show off what you were doing. And if you want to show it off, be sure to put it in the uh, Discord. You can join it below, but there's a specific channel called Stream Follow Along 
and you'll find it, and that's where you should post it. Um, Visionary asks, would you suggest I use your tutorials rather than an online masterclass? I mean, I would use as many things as you can if you want to just continue working on um, your art career. To be honest, I would work. I would. I would choose the master class. I don't feel confident enough looking at my old tutorials and knowing, like, okay, these. I feel that if someone watched these or followed these, that they would definitely come out better on the other side. I think back then with CG Cookie, I was a little random with, okay, if I was interested in drawing, um, what was something I did? like a character, like a female character, I would make a course on it. But I think now I would create a course more on like how to conceptualize a character and give it life and then talk about the technical aspects. The only course I do feel confident about is my color course, which is on YouTube for free. It takes like an hour to watch all the parts. And I, I do feel like that's a pretty good cohesive if you want not only the basics of color, but how to start utilizing them and how to uh, recognize what colors are and how to use them, that I feel pretty confident in recommending. Okay, the last one I have are weapons. Mm -hmm. So how many wizards have we seen that have a crystal on top of a staff? A Trick lot. question, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go ahead here. So when I'm thinking of drawing a staff, I'm gonna do a very you know, basic standard one where you have a wooden staff, it kind of has a weird shaped top and then there's a crystal lodged within it. Now I can't help it. I love this type of, of a weapon. I love a crystal lodged in a wooden staff. I think it has so much of that fantasy element kind of already built in where you really don't even have to do much besides this. But if you wanted to make it a little more interesting, let me try to make a staff that has uh, multiple crystal elements. that. Anthony says something I noticed is that when I'm helping other artists with their work I get so many great ideas but when the pencil's in my hand my brain gets an air code. <laughs> uh, I mean that's why I do like doing the concept streams when I do them with you guys here on Twitch or on YouTube where the last one was the cranny the witch with the goblins. I would have never done a, um, a fully realized illustration like that but I think you guys gave me all these cool ideas and we we're incorporating them and I do think collaborative works are awesome because then you're not just pulling from your own visual library you're pulling from everyone's and the thing that you're able to create oftentimes is way cooler because you have just way more uh, resources and minds to work with hello Humberto hello Lincoln um... <clears throat> Andrej said, Andre, I'm going to say this wrong, so if do, I'm so sorry. Andre says, Steven Universe has a ton of characters based on gems. Interestingly enough, they don't feature much crystals on themselves, though. I've oh, always you know watched Steven Universe. I've never actually watched Steven Universe. It's pretty good. I feel like I probably would like it. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Uh, I actually wrote that down as to one of my characters, or under the character one of personified, because technically all the characters, like Pearl, is based off a pearl. a pearl. And they're all crystals, they're all gems. I love that. Uh, I really like the character, I think her name's Amethyst. Um, but yeah. I'm trying to think if... I can't remember one of their names in that show. Well, that's okay. But yeah, that would be another example of like personifying a crystal. All right, so you can see like this would be going a little more heavy on like more elements of uh, crystals and fantasy elements. But honestly, sometimes when it comes to weapons, a simpler weapon just does the job. It might actually read cleaner depending on how ornate your character is. I mean, if your character is super ornate, then yeah, you can do all this nonsense. But sometimes when I create uh, things like weapons or staffs or wands, whatever it is, sometimes I'll add a lot to it and then I'll take away because I noticed uh, when I do this kind of stuff, I add too much and it becomes kind of cluttered looking. So you want to make sure that if you're, you want to add a bunch of other elements, make sure that it, it still reads well, you know, and that it doesn't just become a cluttered mess. So even with like this, I think maybe like that would work best. 
I feel like the staffs that have a lot going on tend they tend to get, like give them to either like the villain or they always give the good characters like the the good guys the more simple, simple down to earth staffs yeah <laughs> like the I mean don't get me wrong I love a crazy wand but oftentimes when I see people do stuff like this like even this is kind of eh, it's fine but like this. It's just powerful. It's a statement. <laughs> and it's so familiar with, it, especially our generation that grew up with fantasy stuff being like very simple and high fantasy in design that it just works. But when we're going to other things, this is where it gets a little more fun. So let's say a character has, say this is them. <laughs> Hello there. All right, so that is our, our character. And then maybe they they have like a hanging lantern, but rather than a light, it has a crystal that emits light in the moon, or something, you know, <laughs> whatever story you want to make up on the spot. <laughs> Get some spikes or something. Let's see what crystal do I want to draw for this one. Actually, maybe I'll do a very classic looking crystal here. Actually, and while I do this, do we have any questions? It's like it's like capturing fireflies. You capture little crystals. Um, Anthony says, is it okay if I share a work in progress? Yeah, of course. That's right. kind of the point. Yeah, my title page is almost done, and I would love some advice on the opal around my actual name. Because honestly, I'm not expecting anyone to create a beautiful finished piece in this hour and a half. Unless if it was kind of thought of beforehand. Uh, so like this might be my first idea that I'm like oh you know what though since that kind of looks basic <laughs> what if we did a more ornate looking lamp that had more of a bulbous appearance instead and this is where like thumbnailing can really help um, because okay I kind of like the, the shape of this but I don't think it worked well um, overall so maybe let's try a round shape and maybe it's a cluster of crystals within instead. You know, there's a shine. Maybe the same thing where it kind of gives out like an orb of light. And that's where you can kind of play around with it. And then maybe from here, like, oh, well, what if there were layers of it? Or, you know, maybe there's gems that were posted on the outside of it. And that's where designing becomes more fun, like thumbnailing, because you can play with different structural designs or shape designs, like these circles on the bottom here. Or maybe instead of a circle on the bottom, maybe it's you know more of a triangle. And what, how does that change the overall look of the um, shape and the feel of what you're drawing? So before, maybe it has more of a softer glow to it. But if we add spikes to you know different areas, all of a sudden it feels more harsh. It feels almost like it could be potentially double as a weapon. So it's just something to think about as you're designing things. Um, the next one I have was I wrote down a, I believe it's called a thurible. It's what they use in churches to light incense in and then you know they spread the smoke around. But I found some gorgeous examples before the stream started. Let me move this out of the way. Is this one layer? Okay, good. Move that down there. So let's say you have a character, kind of same thing. I'll do a stick figure. Maybe they're really proud to show this off. Mm -hmm. Maybe like this is their weapon, this smoke and disease. Oh, that could be like, yeah, the the pull crystal plague yeah where maybe like he had a, a bad combination of um, crystals or like a forbidden combination of crystals that when they interact with one another with um, some kind of a spell they create this liquid smoke that is just disease ridden and you turn into a crystal oh yeah maybe like it crystallizes your blood so it like kills you from the inside because your blood becomes hardened mm -hmm. something you know it's you know what i think even with coming up with 
you know, stories like this, it's okay if you want to get um, fantastical. Because sometimes I think people feel silly when they start thinking of things that are like fantasy stories or coming up with concepts like that. Because they think, oh, well, you know, this is silly. This is what kids think of. But honestly, the adults that make a lot of money writing fantasy and video game writing and um, all that stuff, this is how they think. You know, they're constantly thinking of what's weird, what's different, how to be uh, fantastical. I think it's fun. Oh, yeah, I think well, it's Well, like, the polite. ideas, I mean, everyone here, too, like, the idea streams and stuff, I think it's just so fun to, like, create stories. <laughs> yeah. The crystal plague. So I don't know if... I almost drew the... Thurible exactly as my reference that I have in front of me, but I was going to change it. I totally forgot to change it because I was talking. <laughs> but imagine if you could see within this Thurible and there were holes or something. And similar, I guess almost similar to the, the one down here where you can see the crystals and maybe they're like melting or uh, you, can, you can give more of a visual to that. So yeah, like this could be either obviously a weapon or something of malice, and that would be really cool. So you can think of crystals not only as like a positive, but also a negative. I mean, they do have charges and vibrations and all that stuff with crystals, but uh, I think thinking outside of the box with how can I utilize crystals maybe in a way that people normally don't, because people usually like see them as sacred items or things that you're meant to, uh, or that things that are meant to give light or hope or... A good energy to like what if you you know turn that on its side or look at it kind of like we were saying earlier look at it like a prism okay well if most people see it from the good side well what does it look like from the bad side <laughs> all right and then the last one i wrote were sword or miscellaneous things like pendants so you know usually uh if someone's wearing a necklace maybe there's like a crystal within or a gem or something and that gives them power or whatever and that, that's fine, and that's all dandy. But for a sword, like, let's really think of how cool would it be. Well, one, I think the sword has to be, for me, when I think of a sword that's made out of crystals, I'm not thinking of, like, a sharp sword, because that, to me, a crystal sword just wouldn't work. I think it would break. So for me, when I'm thinking of a crystal sword, literally, hold on, I'll kind of explain why this looks kind of funny. But to me, a crystal sword would be just heavy as hell and it would be kind of used as like a blunt object rather than it would be to actually cut things. So imagine if the character is like, oh, let me make this smaller for a second. And it kind of looks like, now that I'm drawing it out, if any of you played, I believe it was Final Fantasy Tactics. It was the, the one on the Game Boy. He has like this crazy looking gem sword. Uh, oh, well, thank you, Lemon Melon, for Lemon. subscribing. Uh, and that's kind of what this looks like. But imagine if the character was like this big and this was his sword. And then you could have fun with like the different facets and maybe having some of the sword be. Uh, see or transparent and that's how I would utilize a crystal sword uh, I would make it a blunt object or if you really wanted a sharp one I guess you could make it more pointy and then maybe it gets a little more rocky near the hilt of the sword I believe that's what it's called There was a weapon on Dark Souls, the Moonlight Great Sword. I always thought it was like a crystal. It made out of crystals. Oh, yeah. Actually, really yeah, like that looks like it. a crystal sword. It's like a, not opal, Labradorite. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It just has like a cool. Yeah, share that one on the thing as well. If he is double wielding. Or actually, like a crystal dagger. I think that's more believable in my mind. Perfect. Anthony shared that. I'm gonna make sure we get to that one too or later. Oops, let me make that a bit bigger. 
So I think especially with designing weapons, I sometimes, especially organic weapons like this, I try to mix organic with non-organic. So in this case, the the arrowhead point of the dagger would be more sharp and broken and uh, less perfect in its structure, but then the top of the dagger could be more inorganic. Or not inorganic in the sense that it's not made of elements of the earth, but inorganic in the sense that it has been molded and shaped into a perfect form from a human hand. And that's what that would look like. Yeah, because I, I know crystal daggers I've seen in video games before. So yeah, uh, that's all I had down for the different crystal concepts that you can explore. So you can see how you might just have one subject matter, one piece of a subject matter, and how that can apply in so many different ways uh, when you're creating art within it. And I, I did the most basic ones of concept art, of characters, creatures, environments, and weapons. But even outside of that, there's even more that you can explore uh, that's not like video game related per se, and how that could be explored within your art as well. So I'm hoping that this stream gave you more to think about or more to chew on with how to take a simple subject matter and then really branching it into different directions because that was kind of the point of doing this one and as much as I would have loved to just render out like a rock creature or something Sorry. I think having a stream like this that explains different ways that you can take your concepts in uh, was just I, more fulfilling on an educational side because I can always do a stream where I'm, I'm doing that kind of stuff and maybe I will in the future but I think I really want it to be more uh, tutorial based today okay so if you guys want to post any of the things that you created today in the chat, I will be sharing them live. Or, I mean, even if you are comfortable with uh, posting things that maybe you've done before that were made out of crystals, I kind of just like to see the different exploration and the different options that you guys took with the subject matter of gems and crystals. And I will go ahead and save this out. And I'll post it on the Discord as well for any of you that want to. Oops, let me go back in it. Um, see this at a larger size because I know sometimes on the screen it might not uh, read too well. So I'll be sure as soon as the stream's over, I will save that and post it. And yeah, I'm pretty excited to check out what you guys have. Now I'm going to switch over to the Cintiq here. So we're going to switch spot schwa. Trade places. Move this over. All right. Oh. Okay, one second. Let me grab this. Move this over half. Okay. Yeah, Anthony show. has their thing up there. Okay. Where's OBS? Okay, I'm gonna add change it to Cintiq. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good for a little stretch. There we go. Okay. So, let me Anthony look at some of your guys' crystal creations. Anthony was looking for some advice on the opal around the actual name. Okay, hold on. Where is my time? Uh, oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. So, this was the uh, tortoise that Josh found. <laughs> and you can see how it has more of a structure to it, and that's why I think it actually kind of works. So... He wanted notes on like the opal coloring. Let's take a look here. All right, let me look at different opal coloring here. My title page is almost done and I'll some advice on the opal around the actual name. Okay, so it is the background. Ooh. Okay, so you're doing like a dark opal. Because normally when I think of opal, I do think of the light stone. Like I'm looking at Google searches right now. I'm, I think of like this type of a look, but I think even when looking at yours, uh, it feels too uh, rooty, like things are connected. Everything has like a swirl to it. But when I think of the inside of a gem like this, you can see how there's more like sharp edges. There are more small triangles um, scattered everywhere. Or even this, where they kind of look like little explosions. I think you're, maybe this is the type of look you're going for, but I think I would... Some of the, the ringing effect with this dark brown or the red color that you have, I think gives more of the impression of like a thumbprint or the inside of a tree trunk. So I would definitely vary that up a little bit. Because um, I know he 
was doing the opal in like the wood. Opal wood. Like opal in the wood. Let's see here what you're talking about. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, like how it will grow in wood. Opal grows opal. in wood? I did not know that. Yeah, it'll like attach itself. Um, I guess if that's the case, I would definitely make the shinier parts, like the parts that you really want to glow, give it more of a glow. So in these dark blues and uh, purples and reds, I would punch those out a little bit. I mean, you do have a, a good color palette. And honestly, I love the way that you wrote the lettering. I love the A especially, having such a thin metal um, string and then turn into like this big flowery element at the end. I think it's really pretty. And I like that the V and the A are essentially the same, but just turned upside down. Very clever, very clever. Uh, but yeah, I think literally looking more at reference of the stones, especially if you want to do the ones that are within the wood, uh, and then incorporating that more into what you have here. That's my stomach. <laughs> That's the I loudest know. stomach. That was, yeah. Okay, and this was the sword Josh was talking about. Yes. Where it has more of like that labradorite uh, rock feel. Here we go. So this is from Wish I Was a Tree. Let me open. Let me make a Photoshop file really quick. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And like for these, I'm not going to give so much of a critique as to just, you know, different ideas to explore from here, what I thought worked well. So I think for yours, uh, I like the idea of someone like taking their face off and it's gems underneath. I would even explore that idea more. I think it'd be cooler, almost if it looked like this humanoid, almost like featureless creature, but then all you see is like him taking off the mask or what was a mask, and you can kind of see the mask in the front view, and then underneath are just crazy crystals within. I think that'd be kind of cool, because then it's like the reveal of the crystals are what are so entrancing, rather than it already kind of being displayed on its head and on the back. Uh, I think that might be like one of those, um, the reveal is, of the crystals make it so much cooler of a creature. Uh, the swords actually look like the Final Fantasy X designs that I'm looking or that I'm playing right now, especially the uh, this one. Um, I think it's great. To be honest, this makes more sense to me, uh, utilizing it as a weapon, because when I initially was doing the weapons, immediately I was thinking the whole hilt, or not the hilt, the actual sword part of the sword, the sharp part, would be made out of crystals, which I never thought would work well. But this makes way more sense yeah, to me, where cool. if you have a cluster of small crystals, that would really hurt if you hit someone with it. To me, that makes way more sense. And I think... This is a great exploration of incorporating crystals into a weapon design that to me not only makes sense, but it it's, it feels practical. I don't think I've seen anything like that one either before. That's just a cool... Yeah, I think that's cool great. Look, yeah. And then the environment is definitely like the, the classical fantasy, especially with the willow. So I, I, of course, love it. Reminds me of that, what was that one with the... With, um, I think he's in the dream, but he's like on this little floating island with a, one tree in it. What movie was that? that oh, The in? Fountain. The Fountain, yeah. It kind of looks yeah. like The Fountain a little bit. Like it. This one was Alice. Oh, and you work from the Citrine Rock. Ooh. Oh, this is such a fun design. One of my favorite things... Uh, here, wait. I'm going to open them up at Pinterest on the other side. Is there are so many artists that are doing this now where they'll take an object that is either like a jewelry or a perfume bottle or something like that. Let me open it over here. And you're kind of doing the same thing. So they'll take like an ordinary object, like a perfume bottle and turn it into a character. And they'll like incorporate designs from the character or from the item into it. Oh, that's so like, cute. This one was really fun too. So it's like the coloring, but with like these gold embellishments throughout. Yeah, isn't that fun? Oh, I really like this one. It was like a heart shape box with the, uh, I forget what that um, etching on the top is called, but then they turned it into like a creature. Oh, that's really fun, actually. Isn't that you great? Like the color palette and stuff, then you kind of start with it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like this one, they turned this perfume bottle into the sword, and then they incorporated elements into the sword into the character. 
Oh, I think it's I think these are wonderful. <laughs> Every time I see these on Pinterest, I'm like, oh, these are so good. And like this one, it's like a peacock earring or a pendant of some kind. So they turned it into a, a character. So like this is another fun challenge that maybe we'll explore here on the stream sometime because I just I think it's such a cool challenge. And when I looked at yours, immediately that's what I thought of because here's your found object and then <laughs> here's the creature. creature you create from it. <laughs> Um, obviously there's elements that I really enjoy that have this like ethereal, larger than life presence, um, possibly like a godlike figure or a demigod or, uh, I think this is just a fun concept. And of course I'll always love long legs. Uh, Digimon really, you know, hammered that into <laughs> me as a child, especially if this had longer arms too. Uh, like if it was like this, that's totally Digimon proportions. I think going from here, if I were to challenge you. I would even take it further, like make the shoulders even bigger if you, you want and try to feel what that would feel like if the arms started maybe way out here rather than inside. Why is my opacity so low? There we go. So I mean, this is more a suggestion. Obviously you don't have to do any of this, uh, but I think it might be kind of cool to see what it would look like if the arms were even further out. It's so like break away even further from just humanistic proportions in anatomy. And you might surprise yourself with how much you enjoy it. I mean, even the bottom here, oops, like moving these outs so that they're not even uh, touching that middle body. Like that. Just some light suggestions. But yeah, I think this is great. I would love to see you continue on with this. And the staff, obviously, is something we were talking about. You can't go wrong with a rock on like a wooden staff. It has that built-in uh, fantasy portrayal that I think we all know and love. Ooh, eunuch. Let's see. Oh, this. I can just imagine the feeling of this like someone ripping their skin open and immediately Ooh. crystals like coming out um i think i like it more on the rip part of the the head rather than just in the teeth um oh you want me to read the oh yeah sorry here. no that was my bad i usually am like on that too um, i wanted to go comfort zone today and then i had did a hand so doggo and digital art digital it is it was a first idea and straight to work thing. I only replaced stuff, but oh well. I kind of like it still. Well, he is my new go to character because I like the green red contrast. It works really well. It's funny because I think if you just take out the mouth, it kind of reads to me as like a very angry Grinch. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not the biggest fan of the teeth, kind of like what I was saying, just replacing teeth with gems. But I love what you did on the head because I can imagine this blood like instantly crisp crystallizing when it is oxidated or when it's in contact with oxygen or just air in general uh, and I love that effect that whenever you try to bleed it instantly will turn to crystal so anytime you're in a battle like I can just imagine a video game where you're fighting and if these two characters have the same disease or whatever it is that is causing this um, as you're fighting it you know just crystals are slowly growing out in different places depending on where they're wounded so like that's a really cool concept and idea just that alone um, and I'm, it's kind of cool to see that and where that story, uh, or at least the way that I kind of saw the story and where that went. So I think that's great. I almost want to explore that concept more. So yeah. And then this one's from Zad. Oh. Uh, citrine salamanders live in caves. The gems grow on the back of the males in breeding season to attract mates and it will glow. Oh. See, though, this is really cute. This, to me, is like it's functional and practical, not just having gems, you know, thrown on the back. And kind of like the, the little way that the tortoise was shown on that Yu-Gi-Oh card, this feels like it is purposeful, or it would, it could anatomically be correct in like a fantasy setting. I would maybe have the gems be a little, or maybe not. Yeah, maybe they're just like in these weird pouches that grow like that transparent part of the salamander. Maybe there's like just a little bit of a vein that like makes them grow from the inside. But I think that's really cute. And I love the idea that uh, 
the crystals have more than just a purpose of being prettier to attract uh, or like be a light source like they're trying to attract mates for breeding uh, I think that's really cool yeah, Zedric was all worried because it only got one done, but this was a really good one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Zedric, this is great. I love the idea, too. The, to me, this is like flexing your creative muscle. If if you didn't have time to flex your technical muscle, that's okay, because all technical um, aspects of art just take time, usually, just time to render things out. But flexing your creative muscle is a whole different way of thinking. And to me, this was flexing your creative muscle, so you get, you get two thumbs up from me today. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Felix, this is yours from the last time. Oh, this is looking great. Just working on the landscape a bit. Doesn't look drastically different yet, though. I really like the way you've been rendering. You've been, like, cleaning up areas everywhere. I think the only thing I'm going to say to you, because I think you're obviously on the right track already, is you kind of have it with this rock here where you can kind of see through the rock, like the transparent area. I would just even pull that more into some of these back rocks. Because I think it might be fun to have like the color be more solid on the top, but then even like this crystal here, maybe some of it is see-through more near the bottom. Or like this facet that's facing away from the viewer, maybe this is more see-through. I do really like this color palette on this too. It definitely gives me like diseased crystal feel. Yeah. Like you're going to a boss battle. Well, earlier in chat, Felix wrote, by the way, just this might be, oh my gosh, I can't speak today. By the way, this might just be the summer I start freelancing because that game studio job is not going to work out. I'm sorry to hear oh, no. that, Felix, but kind of scared because there's still so much to learn before I feel competent. But looking at this, Felix, I think you're above being competent at this point. Well, I, I guess I have so many more questions I would want to ask you um, about like what type of freelance work you want to do because I'm a lot of people consider me a freelancer, but honestly, I'm more of an independent artist because I don't have like client work or I don't do jobs for uh, games or movies or whatever. Um, and I think I have to think a lot in like what would someone like which of my art would people want to hang in their house or things of that nature so i'd love maybe to hear more about like where you're going with the freelancing stuff like do you want to be an environment artist freelancer or full-time freelance or like what what path do you want to go down because i think it might kind of be scary right now but i think as you narrow things down well, am i off screen <laughs> it's hard because like yeah when you bend forward it's well either way you know yeah uh, I, I want you to kind of narrow down what you want to do, like what gives you the most joy creating and create a portfolio around that. Because if you want to get work that will be primarily the things that give you joy, you want to start now, especially. Um, ooh, Femme. Femme. Oh. Femme says was That's working on my little shop of horrors, kind of <laughs> flower in 3D, but did some very messy quick doodling for fun too without really a lot of story. Just to break up my drawing tablet again, drawing is definitely not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah, fam. <laughs> I mean, either way, I think this, once again, we're exercising our creative minds. So technical and how well it's executed, I'm not as concerned about it with how creative it is. Um, <laughs> like your little dancing crab. <laughs> so yeah, like something like this is really fun. And I would even explore that idea more. It's so like pulling the horns even further, either back or maybe even more forward playing with more exaggerated shapes because right now everything feels very contained which i mean kind of works but i think if you want a stronger silhouette i would pull those shapes out even further and especially since you have all these fun dangling hanging pieces maybe that back horn goes maybe not that far if you don't even want it super far out let's say it went out to like here all of a sudden that crystal and that string that's attached to it creates more of a silhouette to the overall character uh, well, obviously, I, I've always loved a crystal looking rose because it reminds me of Beauty and the Beast, the opening or the ending shot with the rose on the stained glass. Mm. I love that. 
<laughs> well, actually, the entire opening sequence is really pretty in that, too. It's expe- oh my gosh, that piano song in the opening is so pretty. So yeah, I think my, my advice for you, even if you don't feel like a drawer primarily, is like continue working with shapes. Because even if you work more in 3D, um, think about how your shapes create a silhouette and try to make the most interesting silhouette that you possibly can. So yeah, good job, Fem. And thanks for joining in. Always a pleasure seeing you. Um, Elpa. Elpa, I truly love this stream. I learned quite a lot. I definitely like the concept of turning some something, some into something strong like ice. And I wanted to make a skin with the color of a gem, like the light would hit the hit the arm like it hit a gem. Oh, Ooh. yeah. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of things I I like. I mean, obviously, this I think is really fun. Of like, if someone had a power, the way that I look at this image. Because usually when I look at art, I always imagine the story behind it or like how that came to be. So in my mind, I'm imagining this person like reaching out for something and they couldn't grab it in time because this sorcerer of some sort did this weird crystal magic and like flung it his direction and it like skated on the floor toward him and like hit him and it just like encapsulated him. Actually, this kind of reminds me of, we just watched the old Batman movie, Batman and Robin on Sunday. Oh, gosh. It's so bad, it's good type of a movie. And Mr. Freeze, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, what had this freeze gun, and that's kind of the look, similar look it gave. Oh, yeah. No, like when you would hit someone with it. Uh-huh. Uh, but I actually I like... love things like this. I love ordinary objects that have fantastical elements thrown within it, or on top. And to me, I can almost imagine this being in, like, a castle of some forbidden uh, lord, and everything on it is, like, infected with these crystals, including the forks, the water pitcher... Uh, and I, I like that a lot because I think this is kind of a fun thing to explore. That's where the little crystal plague guy lives. The crystal guy, plug. The crystal plague. The guy. Oh the, yeah. yes, yes. It's just like yeah, with well, his domain, yeah. everything is just slowly being infected. Uh, this is a harder concept to pull off because I think this would either require a really heavy technical ability. Or uh, if you're using color, obviously it's a little easier with color, um, but especially black and white, you really want to make sure it reads as that because this could read as a lot of things right now, even like a bunch of shards of glass that are like jutting out of her and especially mixing it with these ornate kind of details. I would definitely kind of differentiate when you're doing like nice, clean, um, ornate details versus these kind of crystal crystallized uh, structures that are judging out. So I think having more curls on like the decadent part, if that's if like that's surrounding the crystal areas, uh, may help you a bit. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a complicated design that if you're trying to pull off, it definitely can be done though. Because what was the... I wanted to make a skin with the color of gem like the light. You know what that does remind me of? Let me post it. Yeah, I love the one with the face. Though I kind of agree with you. That one's really cool. I think the concept's really fun with that too. So I I won't. I'm trying my best not to spoil it. But okay, here we go. So at one point. The a character will just say, I won't say what happens. Like, is there any spoiler here? Okay. Ten. But you see how lightning, it looks like she's made out of crystal. And it has this very complicated look to it. So if you're going for that similar design that you have here, it is hard to pull off, but it's definitely doable. I mean, even here you can kind of see that same um, look. Let me see if there's another... A lot of it is basically of how the character interacts with, or how the, the light interacts with the subject matter. It'll give it more of a crystal body. But I mean, you're gonna have uh, so many different like little fragmentations of light within it, especially if you want it in the hair. I would just avoid doing it in the hair. I, I think it, it just looks weird and it's kind of hard to pull off to be honest. Um, but you can definitely give that a look but it, it, you definitely need a lot of reference and you definitely have to flex your technical ability more so than your creative one. Hmm. All right. Alpha says, glad you get the mood. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Sammy, hello. Good to see you. So the next one. 
All right, so we're on to Luna Lies. Oh, okay. I see what you did here. So you're looking at like the meanings of the crystals and how to incorporate that into a design. I'll read um, the Discord too. Oh yeah. So it's really tough. Or it's really rough because I joined late, but I had an idea of, an, of a society that tries to fuse people with crystals and utilize their power around the crystal gemstone properties. I imagine someone use their power to assist uh, society, some for personal gain, and some were incompatible with their crystal, and the fusion went wrong. Wish I could have fleshed this out more. And this was, this is Luna Laws, right? Yeah. I think you did an excellent job at creating the concepts and the story behind a lot of this. Uh, immediate, I read the Master Crystal Quartz and how it charges other crystals, and all of a sudden you have like this jade, I mean in my mind it was like a monk or a warrior, whatever it might be, archer, and like coming to be charged from this Master Quartz person. I can imagine this whole world just from like these few little sketches and how each uh, embodiment of a crystal, whatever it might be, has a different um, uh, roles that they would play within the cast of um, this game or this film, whatever it might be. But I could imagine all of it, like just from looking at that. And I totally could imagine these different master quartz people that would be positioned in different locations around the world in this. Um, concept and you would go to them to either heal or recharge after battling um, on the field. Mm -hmm. I think this is great uh, and I love the idea of like this tiger eye uh, crystal person being like a white mage and you wouldn't normally think of like red and yellow as being a white mage color but in this world if that's what the gem um, does I think you can have so much fun breaking stereotypes of what would be seen as uh, like color associations. I mean, even with the, I always say tur, I always say this rock wrong, tourmaline, tourmaline, and having it be pure black, but that's like protection. It's not like a black mage or it's not a villain. It's actually like a good armor guy where normally you think of like white and gold when you think of like strong knight or armor or even uh, sometimes like leather and things of that nature, but have like straight black and it'd be like this hard rock. I think it's great. Uh, I think there's so much you can explore within the story. I almost want to, if it's okay, I kind of want to explore this character specifically. I kind of want to draw that. That's really So cool. I guess if you, if I could use this as like a, a thumbnail sketch, I'll mention you, but I kind of want to draw that because I can totally imagine this. This is such a fun world. And honestly, you do a better job that I do of uh, like thumbnailing in a sense where it doesn't have to be perfect. It's like trying to get across the story. And too often I worry about how pretty things are, but I love that you really focus on the creative aspect here. And I think you, you nailed it out of the park. So good job. <laughs> and then last but not least, let me open this one. Lastly, Sarah Hell says, for the most part, I was just doing random stuff until inspiration struck. Main character is actually a background character trope. Oh. <laughs> um, so I can see you try to incorporate the horns or the crystals into the horns. And I think there there is some things that work here. I would say they'll pull some of the skin around it. Uh, this reminds me of if you've ever seen a show on the Sci-Fi Channel back in the day called Face Off. And the judges always talked about if you're going to incorporate elements that are infused with characters and you're like growing out of their skin, you want to make sure that it looks like it's growing out of their skin and you want to make it look like it would make sense anatomically, even in a fantastical way. So I think if the horns are growing straight out, you could either have them like jutting kind of at the camera like that, or if you want them going more back in space, I would pull this one. Let me pull it like this and I would pull the skin up more and then you want to show the skin being kind of pushed around the horn so it looks like it's like it's coming out because this like flaking this crumbling effect that you have right now it doesn't read to me so much as skin um, it it almost looks like paper that the gems have kind of pushed through or like a watercolor paper that the gems have pushed through. And I think if you want to give it more of a skin look, I think you have to look at uh, references of like animals that don't have a bunch of fur covering the area where the horn juts out and to see how does the skin 
uh, meet the horn? Like how is it, you know, uh, how does one end and where does one begin? And I think that might help you out. And obviously adding color, especially if this is like a, something that happened to her recently, it, the area around the skin might be inflamed. I would make it more red, more irritated. Um, but if it's something that she was born with and it kind of slowly grows over time, then you obviously don't add the red because uh, it's not like constantly in pain. Or maybe it is. Maybe that's this race of character and uh, that's something to explore as well. So yeah, that would just be my advice with uh, that. And then obviously make these look more like crystal because I made them way too much like horns. I love those lashes too. Yeah. <laughs> Always a good lash. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's funny. I watch so much like Drag Race and I follow so many people on Instagram that do makeup tutorials. I feel like that to me is like what eyelashes look like. I forget that a lot of the time people don't have the very exaggerated, long, dark eyelashes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, obviously I love Gorgeous. <laughs> uh, well, these are more interesting because even when they're closed they're still facing up. This is actually another thing to think about, kind of like the horn thing we were just talking about. If her eyes were closed, there's a good chance that the top eyelashes would be faced more down like this. Because when her eyes are open, that top lid would push way up here. These fun dot areas would be like pushing into her skin or like they'd be resting on her skin, which is, I don't know if that's what you want, but this almost looks to me like when her eyes are open, that is the... Um, angle that they have where they're kind of floating up like that but I think if the eyelashes were down I would definitely push them down like this you know what I mean okay and that will cut off our stream I'm way over the two hour mark uh, so thank you thank you everyone for coming to this live stream we do these every Wednesday at 12 p.m. central time Next week, I think we are going to dive back into hands. I, I try to do this at least once a year with my streams, and I think we'll break it up into like two streams. And, well, yeah, two. I think we're going to break it up into two streams. I mean, last time you did hands, that was Collector, right? Back during no, that, that was... I don't even think I streamed. Oh, no, I did stream that. Yeah, because Collector, I thought, didn't you guys kind of conceptualize it a little bit on stream yes. too? Yeah. Yes. Actually, the... Well, and I'll, I'll share more next week about it, but there's a drawing where I drew over 200 arms and hands, and it originally started as a stream, and it was a stream idea that we explored together, and it just kind of grew and grew. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll do a stream on like how to draw hands, and then how to either color them or how to uh, position them the next week. So like next week will be very much the simple tutorials, and then one after will be more like complicated ones. And then who knows, maybe we'll do a 12-hour hand stream. Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> I mean, that would be very interesting if I was like, okay, everyone, we're going to start at, what, noon? And we're just going to go for maybe not 12 hours, maybe like 10 hours. I mean, at that point, just do 12 hours. Then. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Obviously, you can post uh, or you can join our Discord and uh, can keep the conversation going. We added a bunch of things on Discord. And I officially added, I don't know if you knew this, Josh, the crystals as emojis. Oh, no, I didn't see those ones yet. Right? Kind of fun. But anyways, nice. uh, I feel like we don't have any other big update. Oh, we have the shop update coming up on Friday, and we're giving out these pins will be added. But if you're a Patreon member, you'll be getting it for free. And I think that's all I have. Is there any other comments or questions to end off here? Um... Oh, Saren says the dots were supposed to be little gemstones, and thank you so much for the advices. Oh. Um, Femme, thank you for having us. Can't wait to struggle that a lot next week with the hands. Oh, you guys are fun. <laughs> <laughs> Luna does give you permission. You can totally do that. I would love to see that. I would definitely love yes. that idea. Okay. Well, All thank right. you so much, everyone, for coming on the awesome live stream. job, everyone. And hopefully we'll see you next week if you want to learn how to draw some hands. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and take care. Okay. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, where's OBS?